Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. So, I condensed the top 15 things that I think that if I was an incoming freshman or if I was deciding if I wanted to go to Drexel or not, the 15 things that I wish I would have known before I decided to come here or the 15 things that like I wish I knew before I like actually showed up so we could better plan for it. But yeah, so just stay tuned for this excitement. Okay, so the first thing that I have on my list is that there's a lot of extra costs that they won't tell you about until after you get here. So everyone knows about the basic ones where it's just like, oh, travel, food, textbooks, whatever. But for me specifically, I'm a Westfall major. And this will happen to a lot of different Westfall majors, but you have to pay for like, all of the Adobe subscription, which a lot of schools will give to their students for free, but we have to pay for that. So that's like $20 a month. There's lab fees. This is not only for like my major, but other majors in general. And I think some like, like science majors, like I guess if you need chemicals or something, like you have to pay for them or like you have to pay a lab fee for those. So like for one of mine, it's a $75 lab fee for photo just to use ink. They don't tell you about this stuff before you get here. <laughs> Also, supplies, charges to use a credit card, so if you're paying a lab fee, they'll charge you an extra fee to use a credit card, which makes zero sense whatsoever. Printing, you need to pay to print, which they tell you about, but then I guess they don't tell you more about it. Like, you don't realize how much you actually do have to print, especially with my major. So we literally have, like, an open lab just for, like, graphic design students, and there's a printer in there just because we print that much, that there's, like, a special printer just for us. So it's crazy. Also, access codes. I know that a lot of people who take, like, basic, I don't want to say, like, basic college classes, but, like, if you take a science class, like, I had to take physics, I had to buy an access code, like, classes like that but they don't tell you that you need an access code and a textbook, but they always get you with that because you'll buy a textbook and then you won't have the access code, so then you have to pay for it. Very confusing. Wish I knew that before I came here. <laughs> Second thing that I wish I knew before I came here is that taking community college classes is generally more helpful than taking AP classes. That's because as long as you pass the class, the class, like if you pass with like, I don't know, a D, let's say a D is passing, then you just get transfer credits, it doesn't show up as a grade. So for like AP exams, like I only did AP exams, I never actually took any co community college classes, I took classes at a different university and those transferred over. For example, I took 8 AP exams that I only came in with like 12 credits, versus if I would have taken 8 college classes, like community college classes, so if I would have come in with community college classes, like if I took eight community college classes, I would have had 48 transfer credits versus I'm taking AP exams and I only came in with 12 transfer credits. So it'll help you out in the long run if you're trying to graduate early or even just like with registration, it'll help out so much more. <laughs> the third thing that I wish I knew is that 10 weeks is not a lot of time. Right now, It ha it's week four, but I feel like I just moved back in. I'm like, people are taking midterms right now. I'm like, my friend, she just went back to class, like moved back in from winter break on Monday. We're taking midterms this week. 10 weeks goes by so much quicker than you think that it does, and you're stressed out for about nine out of 10 of those weeks. Because the first week you're like chilling, but then like after that, it's just, full crunch time so I wish I knew that like how much nine weeks was but then I was talking to my roommate yesterday and in high school we had like semesters but we also had quarters and like each quarter was 45 days which is close to nine weeks so I guess I'm kind of used to it but it's like more intense in college if that makes sense so number four is that 48 percent of the professors here are adjuncts and they're not actual like full-time professors. So that means that they have no benefits. They generally work at more than one university, so they're not here all the time. If you need to like get in contact with them, they'll be like, oh, sorry, I'm only on campus on Mondays and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm at like, for example, Temple or something. And then they also don't understand the term schedule as much as full-time professors do, so they'll generally load you down with a lot more work because they're like, I have to cram 15 weeks into 10. I'm gonna give you all of this extra amount of work, but it just ends up being busy work that's not even like related to what we have to do versus our full-time professors 
won't give you busy work they'll be like this is the stuff that you need to obtain i'm not going to make you do extra stuff unless i really have to like if like you guys aren't gaining the concept then yes like we will do more but if you already know it why am i going to give you like two extra hours of work if you already know how to do everything you know so that's like something that's very annoying and then i've had teachers be like oh can you email my temple email address instead of my drexel one but then that puts a liability on the students because you need to have like record of us emailing through our drexel email to like them to their drexel email so the fifth thing is we have a co-op here and sometimes you'll get a, like a lot more assistance finding a co-op versus not. For example, I know engineering is a very big thing at Drexel. There's also a lot of engineering students. I'm not particularly sure about how many like co-ops that they have, but I know that they would have a lot more assistance with them because there is a lot more students, so there'd be a lot more co-ops. Same with like business in general, there's a lot more, but one of my friends, she's uh, EIM, which is Entertainment and Arts Management, it's a Westfall major. Their co-ops are really weird because they have summer, summer, and they get almost zero help with it, and a lot of their co-ops are just like not paid as much. So it's like you have a co-op, but you don't have a ton of help finding a co-op. There's a system to find a co-op, but a lot of the jobs you'll find that you'll like more are going to be found outside of the system, which is like, you have some give and take there. Number six is that a lot of the co-ops are very low pay or they're unpaid. If they are unpaid, then normally you can only work around 20 hours a week and then you have to get a second job or sometimes they'll give you a stipend, which just covers housing. So you're left with this time period of like, you're in school or you're in on co-op like starting your sophomore year, you like don't have any other breaks. So since the only time that you actually really have to like work full time is the summer of your freshman year, you don't really have a lot of like extra money. So money goes by very quickly. And then it's also super hard to pick up a second job or like pick up one or two jobs on campus because you're stressed out from all your work and that's like a constant overload. So it's kind of crazy <laughs> and money goes by quickly don't get me wrong you very easily can get a second job like I mean I don't want to say it's easy but like as long as you manage your time correctly you can because for example for me I have a work study job so I work every single morning so I wake up really early go into work and then I have classes until really late so I don't sleep a lot which is something I'm sacrificing number seven is you only have 10 minutes between each class so well you don't it's the way that you can schedule your classes. For example, a class will end at 2.50 and you can have another one at 3, but like you don't have to do that, but you can. And 10 minutes is not really enough time to get from like one building to another. A lot of my classes are at the Urban Center because I am a Westfall major. So it like I don't have enough, 10 minutes is not enough time to get from there to like one Drexel Plaza, which is on the other side of campus. It's one of those things where it's not like, oh, it'll only take me five minutes to get there every single time because you're in a city, so you have to deal with like pedestrian traffic and car traffic. So if you can't walk across the street because there's cars coming one day, but you can the next, it's just like a lot of extra stuff that you have to worry about and it's not really enough time. Number eight is kind of similar to that, is that class locations can change and you may have to run around campus. For example, Sydney this past term, she had a class at the academic building and then the professor never told them but it got changed to like LeBeau or something. So she was like already there and then she's like, wait, where is everybody? And then she checks and then she had to like run to the other side. And then a lot of professors will like you'll be in class then they'll email you and they're gonna be like hey so we're gonna start 10 minutes late today because I'm running late and you're just like okay you could have just told me that like earlier so like things like that are a little annoying but I feel like that's at every university as well number nine I could talk about this for like years and decades but the dining halls and the staff are very like not good and they're rude so at least last year I'm not on the dining plan this year but last year I was and a lot of the dining stuff was like rude or like they would be sitting there on your on their phone like the entire time that they're working and then they would be like offended that I would come up to get food. I'm like you're getting paid to be here and I just want to get a salad or something and they would just like get really like get a bad attitude or something or like they would be talking on their phones and they're just like very unprofessional. I might also have a like so I work for Chick-fil-A back home so I have like this very specific version of customer service in my head and like they're nowhere near it like they're the bottom and we're like the top. Also the food is like kind of eh. Like sometimes it'll be undercooked and it'll just be like sitting out for a long time and it gets really dry. It's just... Eh, good luck. 
Number 10 is that there's not a lot of school spirit here. I did choose Drexel because it was one of the schools that had a lot more school spirit, but it's not one of those ones where it's just like you're looked down upon if you have school spirit. It's just we don't have a football team, so we don't really have any like tailgates. So people will wear like Drexel sweatshirts and like it's normal. It's not like I've visited schools where it's just like nobody wears like their school shirt or sweatshirt or anything so like we do have pride for being here like oh I'm a Drexel student but it's not like everyone goes to the basketball games or anything like that like I'm a sophomore and I've been to one basketball game I went to a hockey game though if you check out my last video I think it's like up here it might be over there somewhere in one of the two things um I'll link my last video but I did like a weekend in my life and I went to a hockey game and that was like pretty fun but there was also not a lot of people there like I went because they were giving out money for like Greek orgs and like I went with my sorority so it's just like a lot of the people that were there were there for organizations they weren't there to like support the team so I wish that there was a little bit more school spirit but I heard that they're trying to change that so maybe it'll change number 11 is that Drexel spends a lot more money on expanding their campus rather than fixing what we already have so for example last year I lived in towers we had a little bit of a cockroach incident where there was a lot there so instead of like fixing that they decided to revamp up Bentley or it was Calhoun at the time and like have freshmen move in there or apparently Millennium is sinking last year the main building had like random floods it's just a lot of really particular issues that they need to fix and like the urban center they said that they were gonna put heat in there in December it is the end of January and we still don't have heat in there and I'm like you guys need to kind of fix what we already have versus expanding because I know that they're trying to expand more into West Philadelphia but I'm like you guys need to work on what you already have um, number 12 is that Greek life isn't really that big here unless you're involved in it so for me Greek life is like a very like not I don't want to say like big part of my life but like it does take up a lot of my time throughout the week in the weekend so like I'm literally wearing like a DG shirt right now also I made it so it's like super cute it's my family shirt um anyways so like Greek life is very big in like my world in the whole Catherine sphere but my roommate she's not in any Greek organization so it's not really as big for her but it's also we're not a big southern school so we like there is greek pride but there's not like 95 percent of the students are in a greek organization i want to say it might be closer to like 30 or something but you will find people who are in greek life and are loving it and you'll find people who are not in greek life it's just what it is number 13 is that i didn't know this but apparently most majors have a minor built into them because it is very hard to double major at drexel unless your like business because those that have a lot of overlap but like past that it's very hard to double major at Trexel so you'll have like a minor built into it so mine I'm a graphic design major and then I have a fine arts minor like worked into it I'm not gonna use the fine arts minor but I have one and then I'm also gonna get a second minor and probably marketing so like you can double minor but you can't really double major as easily if you're not an honors kid you will end up hating the honors kids so for some odd reason they get a priority registration which means that they get a register on the first day of registration and they also have a brand new dorm like it was remodeled by ACC housing which is the nicer apartments on campus are like ACC housing I mean don't get me wrong they're I could go off about how much someone is just a problem child but um they were like remodeled by that so everything is like brand new and like they have a whole separate like building that's getting built on top of it or like next to it that's like brand new for honor students they get priority registration which is really annoying because let me just tell you this my schedule right now is so jacked up like I have nine hours of classes a day just because well like nine hours of classes straight and it starts later so I go into like I have night classes every single time I have class and that's because the honor students took all of the earlier classes because they had priority registration so I'm over here like what is the point of them getting priority registration like if you're an honor student go off go you I didn't want to do it because that seemed like more work for the same degree and like my advisor was telling me to do it but I was like I like there's nothing I benefit from it other than I get priority registration so why would I do it you know but if you're an honor student please explain to me why you need um, priority registration I would love to know just DM me on Instagram I don't care <laughs> like 
it's just annoying sometimes and I'm not the only person who feels annoyed because you'll have a perfect schedule plan but then you can't get into any of your classes because the other students took all of the nice classes. Isn't that just lovely? And then the last thing I have is that it's very similar to the um, my past one, is that registration for classes is like a battle to the death. Like it comes down to you're on there waiting seconds before your time ticket opens so that way you can get the last three spots in like a class that's not a night class. So um, everyone's kind of like fighting for the like, there's like 30 people fighting for like three spots. So you kind of have to like be on time. Granted, don't get me wrong, your academic advisors will be like, oh, it's nothing. Like if you have a class during registration, like don't worry about registering, just worry about your class and register after class. No, the second your time ticket opens, you need to be on your laptop, already having everything ready, pressing OK. Also use the plan ahead section of it because your life will be 2,000 times easier because all you have to do is press one button and you're like you can register for all your classes. It's amazing. But anyways, so that is all 15 things I have for you guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed watching and stay tuned for more Drexel videos because I, I want to do a bunch more because when I was somebody who was a senior in high school trying to decide if I wanted to go to Drexel versus if you saw my video about deciding either Drexel or University of Tennessee there was not really any videos from either school about explaining like the differences so I really wish that I knew all this information before I was deciding don't get me wrong I would not have made any other different choice I love Drexel a lot and I could not see myself transferring out of here because I think it's like no matter how many things that I would say that are like bad about Drexel there's also so many good things about Drexel which makes me want to stay here even more so I hope you guys enjoyed watching and don't forget to like this video, subscribe and comment down below if you are a prospective student of Drexel or you already like accepted Drexel, comment down below like if you're coming because I really like seeing how many people like watch my videos who are Drexel students because some people will watch my videos and not say anything and then I'll like have a whole conversation with them and I'll be like yeah so I watch your videos it's like okay you really could have just started with that because I don't know I wish I would know like people will watch my videos and just not tell me and I was like some of my friends do that and I was like just tell me if you watch it like that's all I care about um anyways thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time all right bye